Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is September 9th, and even though it's been 95 degrees, almost 100, throughout this last week, it is really the cool season here in Maryland Zone 7. And I'm going to transition this whole part of my garden over to the cool weather crops. I've gotten started already. Some stuff I put in last week. I've also started uh, stuff in seed cells. But I'm going to transition this over, show you what I put in, and I'll give you a couple tips and ideas on getting your cool weather vegetable garden started. So remove all the plants that are spent or have disease or bugs and get rid of them. I got rid of some zucchini, cucumbers, turn the ground over. I'm going to be planting for out of the fall just organically, organic fertilizer um, and compost that you can see in the bags around here. But just take everything out, turn the soil, I'll work in the organic fertilizer and then I'm going to put compost on top. This is celery down here. I took all the celery out that was in the path, just yanked out the leaves, just cleaning it up, wanting to get airflow through here, really looking for insects. Took the top off the asparagus. They don't need the green anymore. They've gotten plenty of energy over the summer. And one thing that's important, Swiss chard beets in my area, zone seven, will grow the entire season until frost comes. This is disease on there and that disease comes middle of the summer. Take off, you can see new growth right down there. Take off all the leaves with any signs of disease because these are going to take off once the cooler weather comes. And what happens is, is the disease needs certain temperatures to grow. So this Swiss chard will come back really strong in the fall with no problems on the leaves whatsoever. I'm also going to spray them with neem oil, I can see some insects flying under the leaves. Same thing with the beets. In my area, you can see the circles on there. That's disease. Take those off. I'm growing these just for the beet greens. And I would go through, take off any leaf that doesn't look well due to disease or insect damage. You can see some of the radishes already coming up. Let me get to putting down the compost and talk more about planting. So to prepare the bed, I'm going organically, and don't worry, you know, sometimes you may have to use chemical fertilizers. You can be 100% organic if you want. I just happened to find, if you saw some of my other videos, fertilizer on sale 75% off. So I've got enough organic fertilizer now to fertilize my gardens for three years in an inexpensive manner. So the organic fertilizer will usually say one tablespoon to three tablespoons per square foot, and it gets kind of complicated. This is a 555, and that sound you hear in the background is actually a massive wood chipper that's taking down uh, trees and branches in my neighborhood, and I'm actually going to go ask them for their wood chips. So, side tip, if you ever see chipping going on, a lot of times they're looking to dump the wood chips. They're great for the garden. So here's how I do it, handful. And I'm going to do it in about a one to two foot square foot range and just sprinkle it on. You don't need to be exact. Just doing the space right in here, maybe a little extra. And this is a five by five. Once it's done, just gently mix it in. It's an organic fertilizer. It's not gonna harm the root systems. You just don't want it laying on the top. Let's mix it in a little bit. And I'm planting greens. So I'm only working this into the first couple inches of the soil. I also got this compost was only $2.50, actually $2 a bag. It's all organic, certified, and at two bucks a bag, I'm going to use it. And this is how I'm going to set up my planting bed for the greens. I'll smooth that all out. Let me get to that, and then we'll get to the planting. So it was one bag of compost compost in the uh, space that I just showed you and I just broke up all the chunks mixed it in a couple inches deep by hand just like that and your greens are typically going to be shallow rooted plants that's why the compost on top will work it'll give it nutrients the uh, organic fertilizers worked into a couple inches below there that'll be perfectly fine for the greens again question I get asked why do you start them in seed cells when you can just start seeds in here well here's the ninth I already have some nice transplants ready to go into the ground and that's why I do it. My, my earth beds usually aren't ready for the cool weather crops, you know, two weeks ago um, because I got other plants in there. So I start the seeds in these cells and then just pop them in. 
I want to show you for peas. If you're starting peas in the plastic cells, the whole key is don't damage the root system. So right down here, if I pull this out, it's going to break. Let's see if I can do this. So just make sure you open up the bottom. There we go. And then when you pop the plant out, gently guide out the root system so that almost stuck there. Just tear it so that it drops out and you don't damage the pea root and then it'll be a great transplant. Here's one that came out really nicely. Dig the hole. You might want to dig the hole the whole length of that root stem or that root. Drop the root down, cover it, then drop in the rest of the pea plant and that'll work really well. In here I have two plants. Well, let's shove this one right in here. These are actually dwarf peas and I'm going to go over the varieties in another video. So I've overseeded these mustard greens. So in here I have two plants. Right here I'm going to put just one plant and I can probably gently break this down the middle and then I have two plants. And I just want to see how much bigger the single plants get compared to having two plants in one space. And I will do that, you know, with the spacing just like this for the rest of the mustard greens in this area. And let's go over and get to the radishes. Now radishes have actually been one of the most difficult vegetables for me to get to maturity. And I've been better over the last two years. If you see my videos from four years ago, too much nitrogen fertilizer, they were too close together. So in this space, you'll recall a few minutes ago, I did put down fertilizer, but this is sort of for an experiment. The 555 went down. I'm going to do a row of French breakfast and sparklers with fertilizer in here. The rest of my radishes in this area are not getting any fertilizer, and I just want to see if not adding any nitrogen makes a difference in the bulb, the radish itself getting bigger. And they're all going to be planted just in compost. I'll talk about that when I get to that part of the video. Popsicle sticks with the names of the radishes. These are French breakfast. You want to plant these about a half an inch deep. This is very loose soil so don't worry if it's a little bit too deep or a little bit too shallow. So these are going to be the French breakfast. You really want to follow the spacing on the pack. You can put one to two seeds per drop but you're going to have to thin them to one seed every two inches. So you could do a seed every inch and then thin out the one in between. You could put two seeds every two inches, take out one of them, and that's just so you're over planting a little bit so that you know that you're at least getting a seed germinated every two inches to maximize your space. So that's the French breakfast. Let me drop these back in the packet real quick. Again, follow the directions. But typically, it's about a half an inch deep every two inches. And if you drop more than one seed into a space, you're going to have to thin it down to one. And don't feed these any nitrogen as they grow. Nitrogen will just create a nice leafy green on the radish, which is great if you want that. But I think it really does inhibit the size of the radish. Once they're planted, about half an inch deep, just cover it up, water them in. Radishes take anywhere from five to seven days to germinate, but with this warm weather, my other radishes germinated in three days. And that's how you get radishes in. Let's get to beets, lettuces, and kale. We'll put those in the ground too. So in this space, I'm gonna put some leaf lettuce and some beets. And again, why do I start them in cells? Well, this guy is not quite big enough yet, so I'm going to let it grow longer in here and I'll be able to transplant it just like this. The other thing too is if I put seeds in here, I got to water a little bit more often and when I'm splashing water in there and stuff, it can move the seeds around. This way I get nice hardy plants right where I want them to go. So in here, what I did, I had multiple lettuces in there. I just pulled them out. I'm just going to put one per space here about every six inches. 
The loose leaf lettuce, I usually go around and just collect the leaves, just for fun. I'm going to try and get these to a full size, and that means you can't put a bunch of plants together and they need more space. And I just like to experiment. I like to do different things. So when I come to eat these, I'll just cut the whole plant, leave the roots in the ground, cut it off, because those roots will send up new leaves. So as long as you've got the right temperature, these greens will keep producing leaves. Now for the beets, when you do beets, you get a little bit, a little seed, and when you put it in there, you think you're just planting one. That's actually a pod. There's multiple beet seeds in each of those pods that you get in packets. So I just want to grow these, not for the leaves, but for a white, or for a beet. And I think it's a white beet, actually. And again, I'm going to do a video on the different plants I'm growing as they mature. All right, so I thinned them down to one plant. I want to give them about, I don't know, four inches, three, four, five inches, just so that they develop to full size. See how many I can fit in that row. So I'll plant all these in and just dig a hole. You can't see that one. Pop it in, dig a hole pop it in and you can see how quickly transplants can be put into your beds. Same amount of fertilizer, a couple handfuls went in here. This is the compost on top, just like I prepared the other one. I got room for one more lettuce over there. All right, so what do we got? Kale next. So maybe you don't have a lot of compost, either that you made yourself or you can't buy any because it's too expensive or you can't find it. This is pre-moistened peat moss. I loosened the soil, same amount of organic fertilizer went down in the peat moss. Put a, I don't know, tablespoon or two in there, handful, mix it in. The peat moss will add organic matter. The whole key for planting your greens is just really have a good four inches, maybe six inches, of loose soil for the root system to grow in. And again, I'm not using any compost here. You don't have to follow exactly what I do, just follow the principle. So this is kale, and I don't know if you can see, but there's holes in there. So that white butterfly you've been seeing flying around is laying eggs on everything in my yard. I'm gonna do a video on cutting the tops off of uh, Brussels sprouts to encourage the side growth so you get more uh, sprouts, or bigger sprouts by the end of, of the fall. They are covered in green worms right now, the cabbage loopers. I'm gonna to have to spray these because that's insect damage from worms chewing on them. Again, pop them out. This is kale going about six inches apart. One plant per area, it will get quite large. Just drop the hole or dig the hole, drop the plant in. Now these are all going to have to get watered in. Oh, that's a little bit deep. So raise it up. And now I've got kale plants in. So I'm going to water everything, clean it up a little bit, and then I'll just show you an overview of all the final plantings. So here's this area cleaned out of the warm weather crops. The cool weather crops are in. It's 95 degrees, even though it's September 9th. So if you happen to be putting in your greens, your lettuces, your transplants in, and it's extra hot, put them in in the evening. They're kind of, you know, sagging a little bit, and that's just because it's so hot right now. So go ahead and put them in in the evening. Here are the radishes that I already planted. These did not get any additional fertilizer put in. They're just planted in compost. And you really want to make sure you thin them out to be one inch, two inches apart. When you get to this size, that's when you want to reach in there, thin them out, you know, put a nice spacing in between them so that you get large radishes. I hate, you know, pulling out live plants, but with radishes, the more space they have, the better off you know they're going to grow. If not, if you put in nitrogen and you really cramp them, you're gonna get just a lot of green growth, but you're not gonna get 
large size radishes. So I'll go through there, take care of them. There's some endive I put in back in the spring. I cleaned that up, took out the stalks of flowers. That will grow through the fall. I'll have some leafy greens in there. And in here I had the Swiss chard, the beets, growing them for leaves. And I just wanted to show you the final step. The only crops that I'm going to fertilize, and this is with an organic fertilizer, are the plants that have been growing all summer. This chard has been growing all summer. Just water it in with the liquid organic fertilizer. Same with these. All the other greens are just going to be left. You don't need to really feed the earthbed greens. They've already been prepared. They're growing in either composted uh, materials or I put in the organic fertilizer. Here's a good example of spacing them out. You know, I'll take care of all of those. But once your greens are in, once you've prepared the beds, just sit back, let them grow, and you'll have greens up until a really hard freeze comes and really takes out the root systems. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.therusticgarden. Yeah, what is it? www.therusticgarden.blogspot.com. And also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.